ಶಿರೈರಂಗೈಸ್ತುಷ್ಟುಷೇಮದೇವಹಿತೈಯದಾಯು ಓಂ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನ ಇಂದ್ರೋ ವೃದ್ಧಶ್ರವಾಹ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನ ಊಷಾ ವಿಶ್ವೇದ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನ ಸ್ತಾಕ್ಷೋ ಅರಿಷ್ಟ ನೇಮಿ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನೋ ಬೃಹಸ್ಪತಿರ್ದೂ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಕೆ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಗರ್ವಾಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪ್ರೀತಿ ಶರ್ಮಾ ಫಾರ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಮಿ ದಿಸ್ ಅಪಾರ್ಚುನಿಟಿ not only for opportunity to speak but when they called me that i i had to i had to give this speech it made me think a lot generally i do not prepare for my speeches i i give them directly but today i i had to at least prepare for half an hour for this speech and the reason for that is i should uh, confess to you that i did not know anything about international happiness day i knew about international women's day children's day and yoga day etc but i did not know anything about international happiness day because i never thought that such a thing can exist but when they told me that today is international happiness day um i had to find out what actually it was and he uh, he has already told you a little bit about it but i will just repeat uh, not too much but i will tell you what i found i found that in 2011 the various nations which belong to united nations they found that happiness is fundamental to the goal of human life and they thought that happiness is more important than economic growth which is very important to know so the origin of the this happiness day has something to do with the economy because economy is considered very important factor and also just now dr agarwal mentioned few things like education etc they are all related to the economy and they said that happiness is more important and fundamental to human life than economic growth that is what they found in 2011 then 2012 their annual conference un conference they decided that 20th march will be the international happiness day and in 2013 as he said the international happiness day started and now it is continued so when i learned this history of the starting of the international happiness day immediately the thought of the history came to me and because i am a yoga teacher and yoga yoga comes from upanishad one has to understand that yoga science come from upanishads and upanishads is also called vedanta and there is another philosophy called vedanta philosophy but there is a yoga philosophy which is different from vedanta philosophy and its origin is in vedanta and vedanta basically mainly consists of upanishads and the prayer which i sang just now that prayer is from upanishads so i quickly want to give you the meaning of that prayer so that prayer of course is directed to the devas which are the deities so devas are the divine beings who have got more power than human being that means that suppose there is a storm the human being cannot stop that storm the only thing they can do is how to adjust with that storm but they believe that there is one deity which creates that storm and stops that storm so this way there are some natural forces or energies or divine entities these are called devas so that prayer 
which is from upanishad it says om bhadram karne bihi shrunayama devaha that means oh gods may we hear good through our ears bhadram pashye makshabhir yajatraha may we see good through our eyes sirai rangai tushtu avas tanu bi means we should lead our god given life vyashayam deva hitai yadayu whatever god given life we should live with sirai rangai means with strong limbs and tushtu avas tanu bi means our body should be satisfied that means of course there should be no hunger in the world which exists to date tushtu avas tanu bi vyashayam deva hitai yadayu so i will only tell you this much meaning and the rest of the meaning you can study yourself now once i remember this prayer immediately all the words which are related to happiness came to my mind because of my background so one of the word is called sukha sukha directly translates as happiness in the sanskrit language so sukha there is a prayer but the origin of that prayer is not known so if you try to find it out and you find it let me know where you find it but that prayer is very very old and that prayer all of you pro- probably know so i will sing that is only two lines sarve tra sukhena santu sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu so this prayer is coming from very long time ago and this prayer is telling that all the people in the world or universe should become happy so this prayer you have to compare with today's slogans such as god bless america or god bless india or god bless pakistan etc so you can see that long long ago a human being has already thought about the universal happiness so in that light it is very interesting to see that in 2013 we started international happiness day so this is little bit of background which i wanted to tell uh, the prayer which is uh, sarvetra sukhina santu that is found in the yajurved and also upanishads now the other thought which i got was a little bit humorous because see when we meet somebody like anshuman we say happy birthday to him then if there is a women's day we call happy women's day if there is a diwali we say happy diwali day or happy lakshmi pujan day etc so in india every day there is something going on because there are so many gods and so many birthdays and so many things are there in india so happy independence day this is a very important day so we are always saying something happy xyz day so i was wondering why there would be any necessity to have happy international happiness day so this thought took me in various directions and it also made me think a lot generally i do not think that much but it made me think a lot and i thought that there is something going wrong and that is why this international happiness day is formed then because i am an american citizen though i live in india for part of the time i immediately remembered one speech i gave in toast masters and that speech was on in um, the declaration of independence declaration of independence is a part of american constitution that was formed by thomas jefferson who was very intelligent person in that declaration of independence there is one word or one phrase it says that 
a human being has a right of pursuit of happiness so you can see that the independent united states which broke from the british rule just like indians broke with the british rule that they wrote in their constitution that every human being has a pursuit of a right of pursuit of happiness but if you look at the <laughs> today's united states or any other countries who are friends with united states or related to united states the pursuit of happiness does not seem to have led to happiness so the pursuit of happiness is not leading to the happiness that is the fact there is no doubt about it and therefore there is a need now in 2013 to start a special day called international happiness day so the question will arise what exactly we should do on that day so i read some articles on the google and they said that you should not dance and all that like generally when you are happy you dance or you do something um like maybe uh, you know when the new year's day comes happy new year's day that time we go and have some wine or something or maybe coffee etc or happy christmas day so this they are saying that you should not do this kind of excited things but you should do something else but i could not find exactly what i should do so the one thing we will be doing is we will each wish each other happy in international happiness day that's all now exactly what we have to do on that day so my personal thinking is that internal international happiness day is only a symbolic it is not a real day it's only a symbolic day and we want to make every day happiness day because we don't want to have one day happy and another day unhappy and then another day happy again so generally you will find that we want to be happy always and forever and each and every moment and in every activity and therefore the question of pursuit of happiness is coming so therefore we should only consider today's international happiness day as a symbol so that we can be happy all the days so now that reminds me of one verse from sant tukaram so he said the uh, for the devotees of vishnu there all the days are happy diwali day so i uh, something like that vishnu vanche something like that nitya happy diwali day he says so in that which is around 600 or 700 years ago he has written in a verse form that the for the devotees of the god all the days are diwali day so that means he has already got that concept in his verse that all the days should be a happy day so i will now assume that we want all the days to be happy and the international happiness day is a symbol or at least if we if we forget to be happy we should remind ourselves that we are supposed to be happy so it is similar to international yoga day that means international yoga day people gather and they do some things and it comes in the newspaper etc but really speaking you should do yoga every single day and not only on that day and only for the newspaper so that is my first point now i will go to my next point <clears throat> now this happiness is definitely known to everyone so previously dr agarwal gave a definition of happiness and that is very interesting because in my yoga exercise class there is one concept which i introduce that means when you start the yoga exercise you have to make your face happy so sometimes we have a just the exercise is to make the face happy and then you have to try to keep that face happy 
throughout the entire exercise now i will tell you this very interesting thing that i think so far i have taught around 45000 yoga students and i have trained more than 1000 yoga teachers and out of these i only found one student who can keep that happy face throughout the entire class so i met that girl once and i told her that how is it that you got this happy face throughout the whole class nobody is able to keep it throughout the class like they are able to keep maybe 50% but in some poses like very difficult poses their fa face is not happy so i asked that girl and that was a spanish girl i think she was from um, south america or some place like el salvador or some place like that and she told me that <laughs> she is bored that way she is not making the face happy she automatically <laughs> looks happy face so you can understand that it is very very difficult to keep happy face throughout the whole one hour exercise class so you can imagine that of course it is not so easy to keep yourself happy throughout the day and then throughout the month and throughout the year so international yoga day should give us this pointer that we want to keep ourselves happy but if you ask anybody they will say that they want to be happy always and forever there is nobody who wants to be unhappy except one person i know in fact i know two types of people one person is kunti in mahabharat she told lord krishna that don't keep her always happy so that she will remember the lord krishna but i think that she thinks that if she remembers lord krishna she will be happy that is why she told him that she should give him some pain all the time so that he should give her some pain all the time so that she will stay uh, uh, remember lord krishna and i'm sure that if she <laughs> remembers lord krishna all the time she will be happy the other type of people who i know that they do not want to be happy always are very serious mental patients i have dealt with some of them and even one of them has committed suicide but i can tell you that even the person who commits suicide also he wants happiness only and they think that if they commit suicide they will get rid of the sorrow and they will become happy so becoming happy is a innate nature of a person there is no chance that the person wants to become unhappy automatically that person will try to be happy you can try this for a long time and then verify and if you find opposite you should tell me you will find that all the time whatever you do or whatever you do not do always you are trying to get that happiness and that is why in my adi yoga sutras the first chapter is happiness and its first sutra is sarve api manavaha prakrutya sukhan veshina that means by nature by the innate nature the human being is constantly looking for happiness so now the definition of happiness is not that much needed because it is already known to the human being it's like there is no definition of human being human being is automatically known to a human being now the third point is the question of happiness now will prompt us to obviously understand two things that the happiness is not coming all the time at the same time we want the happiness all the time so there is some kind of contradiction or some kind of competition between not having the happiness and obtaining the happiness so now the question will be we want to obtain the happiness and what we should be doing so because my field is yoga dr agarwal suggested in his introduction that i should give some pointers from yoga so i will do that but in addition to that i want to make some other comments which are associated the first thing you have to understand is you have to understand where that happiness is residing now the human being is analyzed in various different ways but almost all the people including the western people they have accepted 
the division of a human life or human being into three parts which is body mind and spirit or soul this is already accepted by almost all the people in the world even the atheist people they understand that there is something beyond body and mind they can call it a nature or they can call it energy or they can call it whatever it is they can call it uh, a fate or a luck or whatever it is there is something beyond the body mind so let us say for this discussion we have body mind and spirit now you will find that some people think that if the body is healthy they will be happy so they say that the real wealth is health and if you are healthy then you are really wealthy and if you are wealthy you will be happy because they think that the wealthy people are happy but this is not really true you will find that many people for example ramakrishna parmaus his health is not good he has a throat cancer or there are many many other people i can cite including the some of your relatives you will find that they are relatively not healthy bodily but they are still relatively more happy in their mind so you will find that the happiness definitely belongs only to the mind and not to the body the happiness belongs only to the mind so this is very important discovery which is made in india long long ago there are many uh, many citations i can give there is uh, for for just today's sake i will tell you mana eva manushyanam karanam bandha moksha yo bandha means you are caught up in something that means you are not happy and moksha means you are liberated means you are happy so generally everybody wants to be liberated you know born born uh, free united states La statue of liberty united states so uh, swatantra din india etc so what i want to tell you is that happiness belongs to the mind this is my next point which i want to tell you now what will happen is this mind has been analyzed also into various ways and the analysis of the mind is almost perfected in the yoga science so if you look at patanjali's yoga sutras or sankhya system or even the vedanta system the mind is completely analyzed and a human existence is written in various forms like pancha koshas body energy mind bliss and then the soul so this understanding of the mind is very very important for a person who wants to be happy so in the international happiness day we should define determine to study the mind not only the mind as a subject but we should study our own mind because everybody's mind is different and you cannot see another person's mind and that is the problem because you can do a blood test or covid test or rt pcr test but you cannot do a mind test so when a person is entering a, an airport you can check the passport and see whether that person's body is looking like the photograph and from the photograph you cannot know whether that person will go inside the country and bomb the world trade center so the mind of that person cannot be seen so we should make a resolution that if we want to be happy which is automatic because you have no choice you will try to be happy you we must study our mind ourselves now <clears throat> you will find that the next point which i want to tell you is that the happiness is directly related to the peace of the mind now peace of the mind means you are not sleeping but at the same time your mind is not disturbed so the citation from the bhagavad gita says ashantasya kutas sukham means that a person who is not peaceful he cannot be happy so a person like adolf hitler who is 
successful in many ways also his focus of mind is not bad but his mind is disturbed so he cannot be happy he will always be unhappy and many many examples you can find in the current times as well as in the historical times that a person whose mind is not peaceful they cannot be happy so we should make an attempt to make our mind peaceful by whatever means you can do meditation or you can listen to songs or you can do classical music whatever you feel will make you peaceful that will make you happy any music which is not peaceful it can give you some kind of excitation but it will not make you happy you can guarantee that and you will find that many many world famous musicians who are excited they ultimately became unhappy all right now okay now what i want to tell you is that how does one obtain the happiness see the happiness is directly related to the mind and how do you become happy you will find that the mind is always wanting something whatever mind is wanting is personal now the mind is wanting something and due to that want the person is forced to try to obtain that thing so for example if i want to become phd in psychology i will be forced to do some activities like going to college getting exam ex examinations etc and i will get the phd or the uh, psychology degree now this activity what person is doing is a direct result of its want so any person who wants anything they will be forced to act uh, to act those who are not acting and only wanting they will ultimately go in what is called depression so a person who is depressed you will find that that person is not acting but we think that the person is not acting because he doesn't want anything that is not true a person who is depressed also want something and they are also wanting happiness but because they are not acting due to some other reasons so we have to understand that a person who is depressed is also wanting happiness and they are not able to act due to certain mental problems so anyway now what happens is that whenever a person wants happiness they will be doing some action there is no doubt about it they will do some or the other action now when they do the action their action will be according to whatever they think whatever is their thought process based on their knowledge their guidance etc and surroundings they will do an action and try to obtain that happiness now this method will give you happiness and that is why books such as seven habits of successful people etc are written but you will find that whenever you do any action you have no control, no control over what will happen you can do whatever you want you can do very very good things you can sacrifice for the country but even then the country may be divided into two countries or three countries so what will happen you do not know at that time so when you are acting you are trying to get that happiness but what you want from that action is not in your hand and that is why this very famous verse all of you know it karmanye vadikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana ma karma phala hetur bhu mate sangostu akarmani that means you should not detach from the karma you should not detach from karma because you cannot detach it's impossible to detach so if you try to detach from karma you will do some other karma which is not desirable so whatever is your destined karma you should do it uh, and you of course want happiness from that karma but it may not come so this way what i want to tell you is that the first method of obtaining the happiness by doing actions including the international actions they may not give the result what is needed for getting that happiness now the second method that directly comes to the yoga method so 
the second method is is there any way you can directly train the mind so that whatever the result is you will always be happy so it looks like a lunatic method like it looks like something very lunatic that uh, a person is feeling hot but he thinks that he is feeling cold so the interesting part is that indian yogis they already have um, examined this aspect that can we train our mind so that we can always be happy that is what they try to obtain and in this process they have gone through various experiments and various meditations and various analysis they have gone through they have gone through and they have, they have, hello and they have found that yes it is possible some disturbance coming so they have found that it is possible to train the mind and become totally happy now you have to understand this that this ultimately boils down to this concept that whatever happens that means without any reason you will be happy without any reason you will be happy uh, this concept is different from happiness concept original happiness concept original happiness concept is something should happen and then we will be happy but this concept is without anything happening you want to be happy by training the mind so this happiness has another name and that is the name of dr agarwal's uh, foundation is called bliss foundation so bliss means in sanskrit language ananda Ananda is different from sukha. Sukha comes when something good happens to you, and Ananda comes when you decide and achieve a state of happiness without anything happening. So we want to get into a blissful state rather than just a happiness state due to something happening. This is what another lesson we should get. Now this training of the mind. is not a subject of today's speech but i will tell you that in bhagavad gita there are four methods one is called yoga method which is a meditation method second is called karma method in which you have to go on doing the actions mainly for the benefit of others mainly for you can also do it for your benefit but while doing those actions you should not focus too much on the result that means whatever the result comes you should accept that result the third method is called bhakti yog where you become devotionally attached to some divine being now divine being means it is not a fixed being your divine being is what is in your mind so you become totally devoted or attached to this divine being and during that process slowly slowly you will come to the blissful state and of course the fourth state fourth method is the most difficult method and that is called jnana yog where you have to try to understand your existence as body mind spirit and ultimately you have to come to a realization that spirit is the only permanent thing and body mind are not permanent when you come to this stage that is called viveka khyati and that is the time when you will get into blissful state on the way so there are four methods in bhagavad gita and there are combinations of these methods and all the other methods in the world i can guarantee you that there are combination of these four methods only there is no chance of getting any other method this analyzed too much already in the upanishad so what i want to tell you is that you can train your mind by whatever method you decide and try to come to a blissful state now what will happen to your actions see you will find that if you are in a happy state of mind your actions will become better so once swami vivekananda made one statement he said that you should always remember your death so some people they got scared and they said that you know if i remember my death then i will not be able to do actions he said no if you remember your death your action will be more efficient because you don't don't want to waste any time before you pass away so this similarly if you become 
a person with a happy state of mind then you will find that your actions are becoming better and that is why if you have students or children whom you want to study better do not make them unhappy because if they are unhappy they will not be able to study better only the happy students they study better so now i gave you some ideas and maybe last i will give you some directly practical suggestions and stop my speech the first thing you have to decide is you have to make make a determination that you want to become happy because you have no other choice and if you become happy all your actions everything will become better second is that whatever determination you did you should keep in mind and act accordingly only making determination is of no use only having international happiness day will not make it happy you can see what is happening currently 2022 so 9 years have passed so currently the un whatever that organization i am not very knowledgeable about it but what i want to tell you is that only making resolution is not enough you have to make a list of actions and accordingly you should do it so in the 2011 meeting they said that happiness is more important than economic growth therefore all the countries who belong to un they should give less importance to the economic growth and give more importance to the happiness so if some country is not happy the other country which is more happy they should give that whatever they have economy to the other country and not worry about their own economy only otherwise they are not doing that their resolution properly so the second point which i want to tell is you have to act according to what you decided the third is as far as your wants are concerned see everybody wants something so naturally all your basic needs like food clothing shelter those wants you must satisfy first i see that some people they do not have the basic wants satisfied and they have some advanced wants like they want to become world famous yoga teacher or they want to become musician but they are not able to do it because their basic need is not satisfied and they are begging begging others for the basic needs so it is better if you satisfy your basic needs first so you should want your basic needs first and after that you should look for the advance but this is only my personal opinion i am not trying to force it now when you do the actions you will come with obstacles definitely and sometimes you will be thrown into a state where you are going to be unhappy so in this state what you should do is you have to try to adjust your mind or you cultivate your mind in such a way that you will be happy and here the method which is suggested in the yoga is called santosha santosha means you should be satisfied so santoshat anuttama sukha labha that means you get unparalleled happiness that means the maximum happiness you can get only from the satisfaction santoshat anuttama sukha labha patanjali yoga sutra second chapter so this is you should try to keep yourself satisfied but that doesn't mean that you are complacent you should go on trying your best to get what you want but your your satisfaction should not be affected so you will have to do something on a daily basis so that your satisfaction level does not drop down then of course i told you that you should train your mind using a combination of these four methods they are all called yoga methods in bhagavad gita there are 18 chapters all of them are called yoga chapters and you will be able to find a method for yourself now there is one last thing i want to tell and this i don't want to discuss too much but you will find it at least i found it that if you try to make others happy it will definitely add to your happiness how it works i do not know it is like 
see suppose you have four pedas and you give three pedas to others generally you will get only one peda so you should not be very happy but you will find that if you do if you give happiness to others your happiness increases how it does i am not going to discuss now and i i think i do not know it but it does happen and uh, i am not telling you to give everything you can keep your basic needs but if you give happiness to other people it will automatically uh, make you happy it is uh, sometimes said that what goes round comes round or something like that so anyway uh, i will conclude now this speech by saying that i wish you happy life and not only international happiness day thank you thank you so much sir for this wonderful session i would like now if you have questions i can answer i would like to give a brief discussion description of yours to the participants who do not know you sir uh, dr neel kulkarni is the founder and composer of adhi yoga darshan he has received honorary doctorate degree from his work he has reformulated patanjali yoga sutras in 2018 in book patanjali code he has also received dr radha krishnan award for his excellent work he has taught over 35000 students around the world and in 15 countries has trained over 1000 high standard yoga teachers in 2019 he also received swami vivekananda award for spreading yoga around the world so we want to honor you with this certificate of appreciation i would request you to accept it accepted thank you so much sir still have some time if you want to ask any questions you can ask or you can also contradict what i said ask how much could be done I thank all the participants for staying connected with us. If you wish to ask anything to Dr. Neil Kulkarni, you can raise your hand or write it in the chat box. I have sent a feedback link in the chat box. Please fill this up correctly. to get your e certificate in your mail id instantly please make sure that the details are correct you can raise your hand if you wish to ask anything to dr neel kulkarni हेलो 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 यस आई वुड लाइक टू ऑडिबल थैंक यस डॉक्टर नील यस आई कैन हियर यू यस मेनी मेनी कांग्रेचुलेशंस एंड थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सो मच या इट वाज रियली वेरी वंडरफुल लाइक यू व्हेन यू सेड दैट व्हेन वी क्रिएट हैप्पीनेस फॉर अदर्स इट गिव्स हैप्पीनेस बैक टू अस link problem no, no other comments hello hello yes dr neel can you hear me yes sir you yes are i can. can you hear me dr neel yes yes ah uh, dr neel there was a saying from swami vivekananda you know hello yes i, I can I hear you Uh, and it is given in bengali i am a bengali so i am telling you in bengali you have to translate it yes. it's saying i know little bengali ah uh, it is said that bohurup shommukhe dhori chhari khota khujiche ishwar 
জীবে প্রেম করে যেই জন সেই জন সেবিচে ঈশ্বর বিংস you don't have to find god in the temple or something of that sort you will find god in uh, you are actually you are serving god for these human beings birds or animals that is what i'm saying uh-huh. Uh-huh. so this is also one type of happiness i think yes true actually i want to tell you that uh, i studied the entire works of swami vivekananda when i was in bengal for 7 years i studied in kharagpur so what i want to tell you is that swami vivekananda you know he was a great leader and he did not write books he was not a writer he he was original no speaker so all his speech, uh, speeches were written by the audience and they became the books now doc, uh, the uh, swami vivekananda he always spoke by context that means when he is in a particular situation he wanted to raise that particular audience to higher level so he always gave a speech on by the context so you will find that his uh, speeches on bhakti yog they are not matching what you said this speech what you are quoting that was given in a particular context if you look at his bhakti yog he will tell differently so the swami vivekananda speeches one has to study the entire vivekananda not only one book it is very hard to understand him if you study only part of him that is just a comment i wanted to give any other comment or question anyone else who wants to ask something you can unmute yourself and ask directly to dr neel kulkarni Yeah, Neil, sir, good evening. Uh, this is Anshuman here. Uh, sir, very insightful uh, words of wisdom shared by you uh, in this talk. Uh, sir, I have a question. Uh, sometimes, sir, uh, uh, many times, in fact, uh, what we perceive as happiness is suffering in disguise. So, sir, what is uh, true happiness? And uh, uh, is it serving others? Is it finding God? Or, uh, and the second question is, sir, how should we actually aspire to be happy? Or should we, should we be even-minded? Or... Uh, extreme emotions uh-huh. like extreme happiness is it advisable sir ha huh. see what happens is that the even minded concept is coming because of the fact that every material thing whatever it is including my speech or my phd ultimately it is not permanent anything it always modifies so yeah. suppose i get a nobel prize in physics there may be another nobel prize after 4 years which will disprove my thesis and that person will get the nobel prize this has happened before even einstein's formula was corrected by some uh, some student in the virginian school when i was there so what happens is that the concept of evenness comes because the happiness which one gets is not permanent so it is going up and down and that's why it says sukha dukhe samay krutva labha labhau jaya jayau ইন্দ্রিয়ান ইন্দ্রিয়ানিয়াস্তিয়াস্তিয়াস্তিয়াস্তিয়াস্তিয়াস্তিয়াস্তিয়াস্তিয়াস্তিয়াস্তিয়াস্তিয়াস্তিয়
so the even minded person is looking for blissful state and blissful state is not dependent on anything or that person doesn't even have to um, express that state for example one person asked another saint that suppose there is some tsunami or even the current ukraine war is going on does it make a saint unhappy by seeing these things so the saint told him that no it doesn't make them unhappy but it also doesn't make them happy so it doesn't make them happy also so okay. the uh, some sound is coming so even minded state is desirable for a advanced yogi and that will be your final goal so that is about your even mindedness and uh, what was the second question you asked sir my my question was that, sir what is true happiness like many times huh. sir we feel that a, a good food may make us happy but it is suffering in disguise it may lead to a health problem similarly sir we our understanding of uh, happiness is faulty at times what we perceive as happiness is actually not true happiness so sir how can we actually yes. find out the truth yeah so the true happiness the problem is that so to get the understanding of the true happiness you have only two methods there is no there is no more method the one method is that you yourself go through up and downs then you will come to know that oh what i thought was not correct i married a girl only because she looked very beautiful but she is not a good wife so this understanding you will get it by only experience that is one method the other method which is uh, an indian method the first method is the american method the second method is indian method and there you should believe in a reliable source called aptha vachan that means if you think that you know you are teacher or your guru or somebody is telling you that no this girl is not good for you so you will obey that person and that is why in india it is very important for people to uh, verify their knowledge based on the vedic system so therefore nowadays what happens is that anybody says anything and they want to quote you vedas uh, so they will say the vedas are saying like this but actually vedas are not saying always that but that is uh, besides the fact what i want to tell you is that the other method to find true happiness is what is written in the scriptures but scripture doesn't mean any scripture you have to know a authentic scripture and you should believe in that and follow it so there are only two methods one is find out yourself or second is follow the scriptures you cannot do both because uh, that will be confusing so you will find that in america they are doing more and more inventions because their method is more independent but at the same time their life is uh, less stable a, a very poor person in kolkata can be more happy than a very rich person in united states which is a fact i know it because i have seen both so i am not saying that you should not be rich what i am saying is that while becoming rich you should understand that rich only means rich it doesn't mean happiness so you have to train your mind and be satisfied you can try to be rich but whatever richness you get you should be satisfied with that so the true happiness is there is it's not like true happiness it is a happiness which is permanent true happiness means permanent happiness and that is only bliss that's going to come towards the end of your yogic practice initially happiness means happiness is not like true and untrue once you go through that when the permanence comes in the happiness that becomes a true happiness and thank you sir for Another the on answer uh, so the two uh, techniques what you can if you find somebody who is truly happy like you know vivekananda went to rocket and he said have you seen the god he said yes i have seen it all other people said no they they told him what is written in upanishad etc he said no i i'm seeing the god just now just like i'm seeing you so he's the only person who said that so if you really meet a person who is happy and you spend time with that person you will find that you will become happy no doubt thank you so much That's sir I 
uh, yes thank you so much sir for your profound answer really helpful thank you hello hello yes. uh, can i add uh, uh, i have like some insight and also a questions uh, by the way sir i really love uh, the topics why Right now, because me also as a, a peace educator, and by the way, I'm from the Philippines. Though there are words or statement you are saying earlier that I don't understand, because uh, yeah, I'm a Filipino. So here, I just would like to know because when do we know that a certain person uh feels happiness? If in fact, example, I personally have like these two aspects, or I am believe in this that. I ha I am happy first through immaterial things and I am happy second through spiritual things. So in this case, I just would like to know how do we know that a certain person feels sad and in what way we could uh, assess that person to turn things out to at least to be happy. Uh, that means your, your question is how you can guide another person. Yes, because there are people that uh, yes. they cannot say I am sad. They yes. are always saying I am happy, though in fact they are not happy at all. So they yes. just would like to say happy mainly because they don't want us to feel sad as well. Are but you into like the... or a yoga teacher? I'm sorry? Are you a therapist or a yoga teacher? No, I am a, a peace educator. Okay, peace educator. Okay, very good. Your question is that the other person may say that they are happy or not, and they may not be actually happy, and there are some other people who are sad. How to guide them? That is your question, right? Yes. Okay. So the first thing you have to understand, I'm only giving you my opinion from my experience. The first thing is that you should know from beginning that your happiness should not be changed by mixing with them. But at the same time, you have to show that you are sad because they are sad. So if they're sad, you should show that you are also sad. Or if they're happy, you should show that you are happy because they are happy. You should not change your state of happiness. Your state of happiness should be stronger than their state. So if you are not achieved that state, you should first practice to make your own mind strong. If your mind is not strong, you should not do that kind of work. So first make your mind strong and make yourself stable totally. That means your opinion should not change because of their sadness. This happens a lot. I know some people who went for helping the addict, addicted people and they themselves got addicted. So this is the first step. Now the second step is that those people, if you want them to follow you, they must feel that you are trustworthy or they must like you for some reason. They must like you and they must also feel that what you are saying is correct. So you should not tell them too much. You should tell them only until they feel you are correct or they love you or like you. So the second step is somehow you have to form a relation with them which will become better for them later. And after that, you should go and tell them what you feel. So there are three steps I told you. First is you should make yourself stable and you should also be sure of your method of peace or whatever it is. Second is you should make friendship with them or love with them or whatever it is. They should like you. And then the third one is you should tell them what to do. And in this process, the most important thing will be the hardest thing. I can tell you what is hardest in this. The hardest thing is to give your time to them. You have to give a lot of time to them sometimes. Thank you so much for that. Sir. But I have a follow-up question. When yeah. we say okay, even if it's not okay, and when do we say not okay, even if it's okay? Well, can you repeat the question, please? Uh, Okay, so with the info, with the answers to give, I am just wondering, like when is the best time to say okay, even if it's not okay, and when uh -huh. it's the best time to say not okay, even if it's okay. 
yeah see the first thing you have to understand is that in your life you are talking about general life not in therapy right yes yes in general life when you see that something is not okay and you are uh, you feel that you should say okay what you should do is you have to see what is the effect of your saying okay or not okay if that effect is disastrous for example if lord mountbatten tells you that you should divide the country into two parts and you say okay that is disastrous you should not say okay you should say not okay even if you get killed doesn't matter so whenever the effect of what you are saying okay or not okay you sh you should judge that result that result should not be disastrous the result should be better is good good result should be there so if the result is good you should say okay or not okay so for example suppose you see somebody who is going to kill somebody else and they ask you do you know whether that person uh, where he lives you should say i do not know if you don't want that person to be killed if you want that person to be killed you should tell them so you have to see the result in your mind you have to judge the result that way you will know whether to say okay or not okay okay thank All you right. so much sir so much i hope that's all for the question answer session okay good so how many people are there can they introduce Professor Cyril, please ask your question. Yes. Uh, good evening in India. Afternoon in Nigeria. Oh, I just good. want to say, I just want to, the speaker. I enjoyed your lecture, and I'm very happy. So thank you for your time, and thank you for everything. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, I request all the participants to switch on their camera as we want to take a group photo. All the participants, please switch on your camera. Thank you very much, sir. Can you hear me? Please keep yourself muted. Only switch on your camera. Thank you very much, sir. Thank I am you. from Odisha, Bhuvaneswar. Okay. I am a homeopath. And I am also the alternative medicine. I am in uh, alternative medicine. And I like to hear my grandmaster. And I like to show teacher also. Uh, in my opinion, Thank you, sir. Ho oh, gaya photo? Yes, sir. Great. Thank you, sir. It was a great pleasure having you, listening to you. Thank you so much. So maybe one Bengali person can sing some Bengali song on happiness. 
any any bengali song on happiness anybody i'm sure that there are singers there uh, can you hear me sir yes yes uh, just give me 2 3 minutes to uh, on my system i am a singer okay. Okay. Uh, thank you shiva sutra what is what is your name my name is dr s k patnaik surendra kumar patnaik from odisha okay i will sing uh, shiva sutra oh good let me try bengali song gaite bolle to ei ei jate na je koti boleche रवि ठाकुर गान गई रवि ठाकुर गान गई सुनते Can I start that? Yes, please. Uh, one minute, sir. I am from Calcutta, Sham Bazar area. <laughs> okay. Shall I start? Yes, please. So, I, I, so to say, I spend uh, most of my leisure time. gratitude to everybody uh-huh. very good sir. sir thank can, you very much can you hear me sir can you hear me sir yes yes now i very much grateful to you so i very much grateful to you since you have given this platform and i could present your myself before you it uh-huh. was a great uh, singing no doubt thanks uh, thanks let sir. me let, let me sing, sing uh, 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 madhura sarak okay Thank you. 
uh, i think uh, that's all for today thank you very much i will come to kolkata very soon most welcome sir to work with dr agarwal yeah sir most welcome with this we would like to end this session uh, i wish a very international day of happiness to all the participants and to dr neel kulkarni uh, a special thanks to dr neel kulkarni for giving his time uh, and uh, attention to all the participants for sharing his knowledge with us thank you so much dr neel kulkarni thank you thank you that's all for today thank you everyone wish you a happy life thank you sir